Well, when you were 14, there was a situation that happened with a, a kid you knew named Ronald Hall. Yeah. Tell me about that. No, he got killed, man. That shit was crazy, man. There was this place called Kibble's Car- Carnival in Oakland when we was growing up. Like a little club and shit. He was an innocent bystander. Like, he was just shooting and he ended up getting hit in the back of his head. And it kind of traumatized me because I never knew nobody who died, especially not that close. This is somebody I used to be with like every day at the Boys and Girls Club growing up. And to just have him like completely wiped out is like a different experience, you know? And this is before now, you know, I know hundreds of people probably died now, but that was the first one that was like the snowball effect of becoming an adolescent, and a, a teen, like, oh, this is a thing. Like everybody gonna start dying. Yeah, I mean, you even said, uh, I don't want to die early because I'm in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah. Yeah. Now that, that, that was the first instant. And then like my play cousin, I got her name all up in my arm. Like she was in a car with two or three other people. They shot up the whole car, she died. 17. So it was like, that was like right after that. So it was like, all right, that's crazy. And then right after her, a girl I went to middle school with died the same way she died in a car with two other people, three other people. So it was just like, I'm not getting in no cars. I'm not going to certain places because I was afraid of that. That was my biggest fear. Like, I didn't even like getting in the car with certain boyfriends I had that was street dudes because it's like, if you got a noticeable car and I'm in a car with you, what if somebody, you know, you did something before you got to me, God forbid. And now I didn't die because of something I had no knowledge of. I was really afraid of that. So you were just scared to go outside. I wasn't scared to go outside, but I was very aware of making premeditated decisions. Yeah. Yeah. A- as you're still in high school, as you're still. Yeah, I'm like a teenager, like yeah, 14. Teenager. I'm like, I'm not getting in the car with you. I am not going over there with them because I was like, you know better. Like, I don't know. I just knew I-, I wanted to survive. I still think like that. I want to survive. I don't want to die young. I want to be like 70, 80 on some Patty LaBelle and some fly furs. I don't want to die now. <laughs> like, I haven't lived yet. Yeah, I mean, a teenager shouldn't go through all that. No, nah, that's how it was, though, growing yeah. up in Oakland. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Like, it's been worse instances than that. Like, I'd have been in full play shootouts. Like, really? Yeah, man, that's how it is. Like, at what age? Like, 14, 13. Going Bu- to, bullets like, just flying all everywhere. over. Everywhere. That's just normal. Like, but I, I didn't realize that until I got into this business because I was a little bit like, I started having depression and stuff, and I felt like it was survivor's remorse because I didn't realize how traumatic all the stuff I went through was. And it was like, oh, you're going through survival's remorse. You don't understand why you made it and other people didn't. You don't understand why you're in this position. Because yeah. it's like the odds were you weren't meant to be what you are. Statistics say I'm supposed to be dead in jail or a prostitute. I overcame all those obstacles. So now I'm at this point. It's like, how did I get here? And that's what I had to go to therapy for. Like, and understand like you deserve it. Like you weren't, you earned that. Like, don't feel like it's wrong that you're in the position you're in. Yeah. Well, you start rapping at nine. Uh-huh. Just play rapping, basically. No, about I watched the uh, "What's My Name" video mm-hmm. after uh, bounce with me, and I was just like, "Man, if he can do this, <laughs> I can do this." So I always love music. Like I said, yeah. always watch videos, everything. And I was like, I want to do music so bad. Then I just wrote my first rap, and I rhymed, and it made sense. And I was just like, I can do this. I can, I can do it. I believe I can do it. And I never stopped. I never stopped. It took me years to get to where I am right now. Like you know, right? Because you. Start rapping at nine, then you went to the studio at 11. Yeah, I've been doing this. Way, like, it ain't nobody in the Bay, like, whoever surfaced, like, from that duration of my age on up that don't know me. Because I have been doing it for so long. People don't know I got relationships with these people. But there's records out there with me and artists that people have never heard. but uh, Or they heard it, but don't have no knowledge that it's me. Because yeah. I've been doing it for so long. Okay. So, you start rapping at nine, you go to the studio at 11, but things don't really pick up. For a very long time. Nah. So you, you graduate high school. No, nah, I dropped out. Oh, you dropped out? Hell yeah. Okay, why I dropped you... out to do music. I was in the ah, studio all day. Okay. <laughs> and at one point, you start taking security jobs. Yeah, that was like 21, 22. Okay. Trying to figure it out. But I knew like this ain't... So so between there, right? Because I'm smart. Like, I'm highly intellectual. I took the entrance uh, exam to get into college. So I started going to college, you know, taking courses mm-hmm. in psychology, criminal justice, or whatever. Then I told myself, I'm like, all right, try your music. If it don't work out, education always there. That's your plan B. Okay, so you, took a, you got your GED or? No, I never get none of that. I just how, how do you go to college? If you... Interest exam. All you got to do is pass it. Oh, exam. really? Yeah, okay. if you're smart I, enough, you take I, the I didn't, interest didn't exam. Didn't know, didn't know. Okay. Yeah, I took the interest exam. Okay, but you're still really focused on music this whole time. Yeah, so that's why I stopped school completely. I'm like, all right, let me focus on this. And if it work out, I'm going to fuck with it. You feel me? And if it don't. I can always go back to college. I got this. Obviously, if I took the interest exam and got in, I, I decided to just take everything I got and focus on the music. Like everything. Every dollar to my name was going to either studio time or me trying to figure out how to shoot the videos, pay producers, whatever. And it just worked out for me, God willing. 
But when did Big Money Gang come around? That was like high school. <laughs> okay. Are you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> Do my research. That was high school. You know, high like, school. Okay. Those are actually the guys, if you really pay attention and you've really been watching my career, them niggas have been around me the whole duration of my career. Ain't nothing changed. We okay. just elevated in life. Okay. And the first single was How Does It Feel? That was my single, yeah. Your first single? Yeah. Like, notoriety wise, yeah. My okay. first single, though, like, that led into that was Out the Bottle First. How Does It Feel just blew up bigger. But I knew that. That's why I did that. I'm like, all right, this going to get their attention. This going to go. I knew it. That was 2015. Yeah, I knew it, though. So you dropped How Does It Feel? Mm -hmm. And uh, people start paying attention. Like a mother. Pitchfork, NPR, like the big mm -hmm. kind of established music entities were like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. How did that feel? Like I said, I didn't understand it at that time because I was going through so much. You know, my best friend was dying from cancer. So it's like when I'm supposed to be feeling all these positive things, I didn't conceptualize what was really going on for a long time. Like it took me three years, literally like to last year to understand like, you know, you got a commercial with LeBron James. Your first year, two in the game. Do you know you got a record with Drake? Within three, four months of your career, like all these things that I should have been like super excited about. No one knew, knew that I was really secretly like, damn, like what the fuck is going on? Like, you know? Right. Because the friend you're talking about is Cocaine James. Yeah. And this was your best friend. Yeah. I've been knowing James since I was like six, seven years old. He died of cancer yeah. April 23rd, uh -huh. On my mama's birthday. Right? Crazy, right? What kind of cancer was it? Osteosarcoma. Okay. So it started in his knee. He was complaining about his leg for a long time. We're like, whatever. Then he ended up going to get some tests. And that that was the last thing we was thinking. We was like, yo, what? And then it just progressively happened. And within a year of us finding out, he was dead like within the next year. Like barely, like eight, nine months, he was dead. 24 years old. I think he was 20, 23. 23? Yeah, 23. Okay. 23 years old. Cancer. That's something an 80-year-old usually gets. Yeah. And he had a daughter yeah. on top of that. Yeah. Hmm. Man. Yeah. That was a tough one, I'm sure. That was what's keeping him here. He was like trying to fight it to the end. Like he literally didn't die until I had a conversation with him right like two days before he died. I was on the phone with him. He could barely talk. And I just told him, I'm like, I know why you fighting. I know why you holding on. I'm like, she good. Like, you know, because he was suffering. At this point, you're suffering. And I'm like, it's okay. Like, I got her. And that was our last conversation. And then like the next day he stopped talking. And the next day he just, my eyes water. Sometimes I talk about it. Well, you wrote a song for him, uh, for yeah. my dog. Yeah, that's my bad. Yeah. And you actually went into a real deep depression after he died. Uh-huh. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, I just lost my dad recently. It's uh, losing someone you care about. I got some tissue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm tearing up too, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, yeah. Well, seeing seeing someone. Uh... Thank you. Did I don't want to fuck it up. You should be like, I gotta fix this. I'm sorry to hear that. I mean, I, I saw my dad. Uh, he had Parkinson's and like the slow. Man, it's, it's one thing when someone just gets killed and it's over. I've I've had friends that, that just it, died. Right? Yeah. But to see someone month after month go just through go. it, is, yeah, is, uh, put you more. You see, it's like four, five years later, I still cry. I can't yeah. talk about it because it's like, it's traumatizing to watch somebody go through that. Because it's like, you got to pretend like you think it's going to be all right when you know it. Like, there ain't no way about it, you know? 